Hello. 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 This is Extreme Orange. Welcome to the Extreme Exchange. Today I'm joined by good friends from Parliament here. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the Extreme Exchange. Today I have the very special privilege of talking to Tia Hao. Say hi. Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> hey Ben. So Tia Hao is the founder and director of a non-profit Christian creative agency known as the Fireplace Collective. So their mission is to empower the Christian community to fulfill the Great Commission through music and media. They do this by coordinating and connecting Christian songwriters, musicians, churches, parachurches, and organizations to the relevant expertise to produce creative content. So do check them out on their website, which will be linked in the description in this video. Other than that, um, Tia Hao is also one of the worship leaders at Fireplace Worship. So thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Uh, the song is called Best Friends. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of it. But basically, um, if you take a look at the song, there is very, very little to no reference. Okay, there is one reference to, um, to God himself or to uh, anything uh, Christian at all. You can just take a look at the lyrics. Uh, they, they, they are more uh, secular than the average Yeah, Christian I, can, I, can, I can see it. I can yeah. see it. So yeah. I guess the, the question that, I, that I've been asking myself a lot is, Will, will we sometimes be tempted to produce music that is meant for listening, I guess, um, meant for the listener's enjoyment or uh, the listener's... Yeah, I, I think you get what I mean. Uh, rather than uh, worship to God. I mean, not, not that I'm saying it's, it's bad, but we, I think we have to recognize that it's not the same thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so don't, don't mind... Uh, my kids yeah, are yeah, chanting in the background. I can barely hear it because I think I'm like, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just looking at this song and, um, yeah, it's it's interesting because it's, <laughs> it's uh, about like, man, like everything that I've been chasing in this life, hmm. you know, is wasted. Um, it's not like important. Like, I am sick of pretending. I want the truth. Um, I'm, I'm done trying to find the next hype, you know. And basically, it's pointing like, I want truth, nah, you know. Mm. Um, and I know it's you. So, um, like, I understand because large part of the song, it, it isn't our traditional worship yeah. song. Like, right. you know, talks about Jesus being magnificent, the wonderful counselor, Emmanuel, mm. and all these things, right? Um, but I think what we can talk about with this song, right, is the role that songs have to play. Hmm. In terms of a evangelistic and a discipleship context, hmm. so a lot of the worship songs that we sing are really um, they have a very strong um, um, ability to disciple the next generation. So it means that I'm a Christian, and I'm I'm giving a very general um, overview. Might not be the same in every case, but I'm just putting it that way. So if I sing a song like. Uh, you were the word at the beginning, you know, songs like that. And I worship mm. in church, I'm a, I'm a Christian. The words in a song that are very God-centric mm. have the ability to disciple me into deeper knowledge of who, who Christ is and what He's done for me, and as well as what my response should be, yeah. right? So this is in general, right? But with a song like this, right, mm. um, I recognize that songs can be evangelistic in nature, mm. In other words, if I went to, let's say, a live uh, performance, let's say in Orchard Road, mm. or I sang a song at my friend's party where there are a lot of non-Christians and stuff like that, like if I sang, like, what a beautiful name it is, <laughs> like, you know, sure, okay, yeah. like, may, okay, maybe the presence of God will come and lives will be touched and it's so beautiful. Okay, I'm not saying that it won't, right? Um, but in terms of lyrics, you know, like, if someone is a non-Christian, how much would they understand? Yeah. Right? Because we understand it because we have spent years mm. like reading the Bible. <laughs> you know, yeah. we understand the technicalities of like the language of the Bible and all that. So it makes sense for us, you know, and it's, we can decipher it for ourselves. But for a non-Christian, like it might be like, wow, this is, 
like I don't understand <laughs> like what you're mm. saying, you know, mm. and maybe it wouldn't like uh, reach their hearts in a very deep way, right? Mm. But for for example, if you had a song that was like the song that you just brought up just now, that was very like, hey, how come sounds so worldly, right? You yeah. know, like like man, talk about like your emotions, talk about like I'm over the the hype, you know, I'm looking for the real stuff. Mm. It doesn't sound like a worship song. You know, but eventually, yeah, like you talk about God, you know, mm. that God is the one that we're looking for. It might not fit in a worship context. You're talking about discipling like um, Christians and all that. But if it's used in a, as an evangelistic tool, mm. yeah. for example, play in a club, mm. play in a live gig venue, play at your friend's party, and after people hear it and they like the melody, they like the, the instrumentation, they like the music production, because that's a huge part, right? And then the lyrics, right, they start to ask you about it. Um, mm. Hey, bro, so, wow, this song very cool, man. So, what is the next hype mm. that this song is talking about? Yeah. You know, what is the thing that who's really, you, like, right? yeah, who's the you, for example? Yeah. Then you're like, man, yeah, yes, this is the yeah. open door to share the gospel. Mm. So we should never discount like a song like this, you know, right, right. just because it doesn't fit the framework of a worship song in church that disciples Christians mm. towards deeper knowledge of God. But maybe a song like this can be used in, in, in an evangelistic context. It might even be used in, let's say, Alpha, you know, when your church mm. is doing yeah, it yeah. and you have friends who don't know God and you have a music part, you know, it might be the very song that leads to a conversation to discover who is the real hype, <laughs> who is Jesus, and his love is really the thing that it's uh, all about. Yeah, so to separate this two, to look at it from that lens. I think for sure we don't want to limit the way that God can work through a song. I mean, who's to say that, that um, a song that is maybe even more secular as this couldn't um, lead somebody to Christ, you know? And so, yeah, I mean... I never really thought about it that way, actually. Um, in that sense, uh, this song also has its function, it also has its use. Yeah, so so I, I think, I, I'm, I'm, personally, I am quite excited to see this this new, I don't know what's the word for it, category of, of, of songs um, that I guess we're going to see a bit more of them maybe um, in the future. And they can definitely be used to reach out to more people. Um, yeah, and, and like, I, I did have a... Uh, uh, I, I had a conversation with a friend before um, about, this, uh, about this particular song. And we kind of said that, I mean, maybe it doesn't have as much Christianese in it, right? But it is certainly better than singing some of the the more worldly songs that are out there, like the secular songs that are uh, like all about um, love and the culture and, and things like that, um, or, or it have even darker themes that you don't really want your kids to be listening to, that kind of thing. So yeah, I mean, it, it definitely has its function. Uh, and um, I think as long as we recognize what the function is, um, we, can, we can use it to, to further God's kingdom, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like thinking about whether like in my approach to a song, like am I looking to use a song to draw me closer to God? Mm. Or do I want to use a song to like as a tool to reach out to a certain group of people? You know, so when I look at this song, like I'm like, okay, I might not turn to this song to worship God so that I can feel closer to Him. Because mm. <laughs> like it doesn't articulate like what I want to say. And I think, yeah, like, it's also, like, your level of, like, Christian maturity. Maybe you're looking for a song that would allow you to, like, articulate and declare, like, truths that are deeper mm. so that you can get close to God. But then when I look at this song, I'm thinking, like, if I have a non-Christian friend, right, like, this might be my tool to, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. to, to use so I can start a conversation with him. Mm, yeah. Sure. So... Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me. I mean, I really enjoyed this conversation. Yeah, and um, here's to more fruitful conversations in our Christian community. So thank you everybody so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of the Extreme Exchange. Bye-bye.